Good evening, everyone. It's the Victorian ghost hunter again. I'm here at Lowther Pavilion and Lowther Gardens in Lytham, and I'm going to be taking you inside the theatre. But first of all, we're outside in the gardens. And I don't know if you've been to Lowther Gardens, but they are beautiful. Not only are there lovely pathways and bowling greens and tennis courts, but there is also a wonderful pond here. You've got to come and pay it a visit. But before we do go inside, I want to introduce someone. I've got a special guest with me, and that is Mr. Dan Creasy, a trustee of Lowther Pavilion. And I'll just bring Dan into the shot, hopefully. We do have to say that we're socially distanced. Um, and we will be while we're doing this. Do not worry. Um, Dan, thank you for joining us. You're welcome. And thank you for allowing the Victorian Ghost Hunter Investigates inside the Lowther. Um, you have been at Lowther Pavilion for many, many years. Yes, about 15 or so. Amazing, amazing. And I, I've known you for quite a number of those mm. years, if not all of them. My early ghost hunt days. My early ghost hunt days. And the other thing I wanted to, to point out is that we do ghost tours and ghost hunts here at Lowther Pavilion. And it is thanks to Dan that we're able to do these. So I've invited Dan along because I want him to tell us a little bit of history about Lowther Pavilion, what we're doing here. And then I'm going to take you inside and do a little bit of a, a ghost tour and a ghost hunt as well. So Dan, tell me a little bit about Lowther Gardens. That's mm -hmm. where we are at the moment. Yes, yeah, so Lowther Gardens was originally a grazing area called Hungry Moor in the 1800s and it was gifted by the uh, squire Talbot Clifton I think it was, uh, yes. Talbot Clifton associated with the London Hall. Uh, yeah indeed. Squire at the time. And he named the gardens after his wife and uh, her maiden name which was Lowther, the Lowther family of Cumbria. Yes. Um, so the link there to Lowther Castle and all of the um, up there. So he set out the gardens as they are today um, basically a rotund in the middle, which used to be a bandstand. Yes. Um, and kind of like a, a, a spokes off in four directions. Mm. And the pavilion wasn't built till 1921. Um, and it was only because the ladies' orchestra at the time, were, who used to be renting and playing these gardens, obviously landed gentry at the time. Of course. <laughs> they were complaining in the uh, October months, like we are now, <laughs> uh, that they were freezing cold. A bit chilly a bit outside. Chilly, absolutely. And uh, <laughs> Bob's first violin was uh, obviously not used to the, uh, the no. far coast weather. No. Um, so they wanted a more permanent structure built to originally house the ladies' orchestra at the time in the 1920s. Yep. And that's where the uh, first incarnation of the pavilion was, uh, was built. It was actually originally going to be a very large bandstand. Right. Um, if you just can pan around, you can see it there in all of the glory. There we go. <laughs> and it was originally going to be a bandstand uh, on stilts, essentially, so a massive bandstand, so it would still obviously provide shelter for the for rain, but not from wind and other prevailing well weathers that we are so used to on the Falcon Coast. It's not the best. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, so, yes, it was originally uh, then built into a wooden pavilion in 1921. Uh, again, but over overseen by the uh, Clifton family mm -hmm. at the time, and that was remains to this day basically the the ethos behind why it was built. It wasn't actually a stage. There was never a stage in the original um, original incarnation. There was never a stage. It was really? literally a pavilion. It was just. I didn't know. Yeah, it was just going to be a bandstand. Um, yeah. Just for the orchestra. So there was a raised platform in the middle mm -hmm. and seating all the way around. And, and just with pillars, with the with uh, vaulted roof, vault, yeah. yeah, and the vaulted roof and the and the maple floor are actually the only original features that we still have, uh, as you'll see in a bit when we get it. Yeah, fabulous. Well, I think what we'll do is we'll wander over to the pavilion. We're not going in through the front door. No, we're going in through a side door, um, but that will take us pretty much right into the auditorium as well. And Dan, thank you for for that because. Okay. I know a little bit of history about Lauda Pavilion. I've come here often enough, um, but I just make it up and, and forget the dates and uh, say the wrong thing. Absolutely. That's what usually happens. <laughs> so we're, we're heading back to the Pavilion Theatre now. However, I will be coming out a little bit later into the gardens because right behind me, and you can see all the way past the pond, Actually, 
the people of Liverpool will be screaming at the hill. Okay, go on. <laughs> you, you, do you want to say anything about know, that? I don't know much about the shrimp. I only know it was commissioned um, in 2003, and there originally was a bandstand. That's where the bandstand used yeah. to be. Um, and that's why the orchestra was obviously complaining of the cold. It was turned into the shrimp at the turn of the, uh, the late time. So it's not a pond. <laughs> it's not a pond with a statue in the I'm middle. Only, I'm only saying what your Facebook people will be screaming at the I'm moment, sure, though. but um, I'm too old to worry about that. Being Victorian, it's a little bit... Actually, it's younger than me. So um, we will be coming back out later and going further down the pathways uh, from the shrimper in different directions. But I want to wait until it gets a bit dark for that. Um, but for now... Let's make our way inside the theatre the and theater into the auditorium. The is the renovation that was taking place in 1982. So the uh, theatres that used to be on the Tower Coast were, there was a theatre on the end of the pier, Lytham Pier, yes. which famously burned down uh, late 1900s. Mm -hmm. The Ashton Theatre, which used to be in Ashton Gardens in St. St. Anne's. Anne's. And that burned down in 1976 during a production of Charlie Girl. And ah. at the time, um, the entire community came round them and dived in and um, got all the costumes and the set out of the way of the fire. The whole thing burnt to a crisp, and their last night of the performance was transferred here. And at the time, this place was being called the Viaco Jacks, and the local authority were going to bulldoze it. Oh my goodness! And they turned up here on the last night, and all the local amateur society banded together, put all the set together, put the lights in, did everything, and basically they were the reason of the safe theatre because it was the Fire Coast only theatre left. The only one. Um, so the local authority at the time went, well, we have to have, a, obviously, a theatre yeah. on the Fowl Coast, and we have to do something. And luckily, the money that we were going to be invested in the Ashton Theatre was ploughed into here, and that's the same it stands today. So it's due to the ill-fated otherness of, the, of, of all the rest of the yeah. Fowl Coast theatres that this one survived. Well, thank goodness it has, and this is still the only Fowl Coast the, yeah, theatre. Yeah. Well, let's go inside, and we'll get through into the auditorium. Thank you, Dan. So, I will let you know that um, I'm going to be locked in on my own shortly. This is why it's called the Ghost Hunter. Oh, oh, oh. It's why it's called the Victorian Ghost Hunter Investigates, because although I will have special guests with me, it's more about me telling you the stories of what goes on uh, and showing you some little eerie areas. Now, I'm just going to point out the wonderful auditorium here. And this has changed. Massively. Yeah, so the only original panel, the only original is the original vault. That, that stands up to 1921. Yeah. Indeed. But it's even changed in the time I've been coming in here because there didn't used to be a seating bank like this. No. Used to be chairs sitting out on the floor and then a shorter seating bank that would pull out from the back walls, wasn't it? Yeah, there was, yeah, there was two seating banks inside. There were actually only two different seating banks. Right? Yes. <laughs> the events, so yeah, it's, it's aided us quite well. So this Fantastic. is all electric now, so electric switches Everything comes out. Right. Into the flat floor, so we, we host music. Absolutely amazing. A wonderful theater, a wonderful building, wonderful gardens. But now it's time for me to send Dan <laughs> away. So <laughs> shall we? To do this? <laughs> I'm not sure. I've been in this theater many a time at night, and even I wouldn't want to do this. <laughs> well, I've, I've spent many a night in different locations on my own. Mm -hmm. I've been locked in for 12 hours in a certain cinema. Um, but no, this will be the first time I've been locked in to Lowther Pavilion, so. Um, we'll start here. Now. Oh. It's a little bit dark in this area. I'm still here, don't worry. At the moment, anyway. 
We'll, we'll, we'll see Dan when he comes back in an hour to let me out, hopefully. If, uh, no, I didn't. Thank you, Dan. Take care. So, Dan is now leaving the building. Um, where he's gone in, that is the office. And the main exit, for those that work in the office, is through a back door there. That is the main entrance way for people who are coming into the theatre. It is already locked. And now it's time for me to go back in to the auditorium. Now, it is going to be dark, but hopefully I won't fall over. I'm going to get a torch, and we shall start. Now, there are certain areas inside the Louser Pavilion. It is very dark in here. Oh, I definitely need my torch. Um, that a lot of people have gone into and experienced much activity. Now, people who have come to see shows, people who have worked here, and I don't just mean people who have been on ghost hunts and investigations um, with me or with Supernatural Events or any other company. However, the reason I'm bringing you here is I want to explore two or three different areas myself. Now, here, this is the main auditorium, but what I want to do, first of all, is go just for a little wonder so that we can see that uh, the pavilion is empty and it is just me. I've got my little lantern. I also have a few little bits and pieces with me, if time permits. Now, you'll see a wonderful friend of mine sitting down here on the chair lovely little doll that was presented to me as a gift and this little doll has made an appearance on the ghost tram once or twice uh, towards Halloween last year but I'm going to use her as a trigger object um, because there is a storeroom that many people have gone into and they've spent 10-15 minutes and then they have pretty much run out of the storeroom and run away so let me just lift our little friend. We'll go to the storeroom now and I can explain a little bit more. As you can tell, these videos are not going to be edited and they're not going to be professional movies. I want it to be pretty much a live experience. So let's keep walking this way. That is the doll. And the reason I like this doll so much is because it has got a voice, but you have to push the button. And I will show you that in two seconds. Now, this is the little storeroom that I have mentioned. And I will show you around this little area. It's basically where chairs and seats and tables are stored. There's nothing much to it. It's not a huge space. And there's not an awful lot of room to investigate. However, people have, as I've said, run out of this room. They have heard strange noises. They've heard voices. We've left trigger objects in here on investigations. And when we've come back in, they have actually moved. So that's why I've brought my little friend. I'm just going to point out that she does speak, she does make noises, and you have to push the button. She is eerie. And I'm just going to leave her here. And that is it. That's all I'm going to do. I'm going to leave her here, and I won't be coming into this storeroom until later on. So now that we know she's in position, let's go for a little wonder around the rest of the theatre back out into the auditorium. It is so dark in here. Just being very careful of where I'm walking at the moment. I don't want to trip. <laughs> it's the last thing I want to do. Now, yeah. we're right beside the stage. So I'm going to take you up the shortcut, which is the treads at the side of the stage. Let's go 
going to come up here first of all. I will have the lights turned on again later and I will share some photographs of this amazing stage. Um, but for now, I'm just going to come up here. And I just have to sense what the auditorium is like and the stage. Now, it is going to be difficult. It is very dark. You may hear some noises, which will be the wind above the stage. If you imagine that safety curtain that you'll have seen in theatres, it comes down um, at the interval, at the end of the show. It has to go all the way right up into the ceiling, into a space above the stage. So it is a very high area. And sometimes we do hear the wind coming through. And we do hear the odd noise from that safety curtain as well. So, it's one thing I like to do. I like to be truthful. I like to make sure that we know that not everything that goes bump in the night is a ghost. We're just in the side area of the stage. Where the staff will be. In the corner. small area. I'm going to go back down again into the auditorium and hopefully I won't fall down the steps. I have brought some more gadgets and so on with me. Things that people use on ghost hunts and investigations. wander around first of all so let's go backstage let's go to the dressing rooms and see what we've got through here at least you can see a little bit more now this is backstage you can see right into the gardens there our exit but we're going to go through this door we're going to have a little look one or two of the dressing rooms. So, just the door closing behind me. Dressing room one for the stars of the show. At the moment, that is holding some equipment. Now, we're right behind the stage. If we go through this door, it will take us upstairs onto the stage. The one that I'm looking forward to is going down these steps and taking you under the stage shortly as well. So before we do that, I want to go to the dressing rooms. We're going to have a look in dressing rooms three and four. And that's because they're the first ones through the door. So let me just turn the light on first. It gets confusing. Two Victorian ghost hunters in the same room. Now, this is just one of the smaller dressing rooms. So, if you're performing at the Lowther, this is where you could be uh, getting changed, getting ready to go out onto the stage. We might try a little bit of scrying in here later. I like doing that when there's mirrors. I'll explain that a little bit later. But for now, let me take you into another dressing room, which will be dressing room number four next door. Here we go. We'll turn the light on so we can see, first of all, 
This is probably the smallest of the dressing rooms at Lowther Pavilion. So this is dressing room number four. When you come in through the door, that is it. Why have I brought you into the dressing rooms? Well, many actors and actresses who have been in here changing, getting ready to go out onto the stage. They're the ones that have seen and heard things that they can't explain. They could be sat here doing their makeup, checking their outfits, making sure they're ready to go out onto the stage. And when they stand up to go out, the door that we have just come through opens on its own. There's nobody there. The door just opens. People have gone looking to the door. They've ran to the door thinking somebody's trying to come in. Why would they run to the door? Well, you shouldn't really go into anyone else's dressing room. But there's been nobody at the door. There's been nobody in the corridor outside either. So who is it that is opening the doors and coming into the dressing room? Perhaps we'll find out a little bit later. When I turn the lights out, and we come back in to this room, and number three as well. Now, let's come out of the dressing room, and I'm going to take you downstairs under the stage. Let's go this way first. You can see we're going down some steps. Let's keep our fingers crossed. The lights are still on. So, a lot of equipment is kept down here. A lot of props, a lot of lights, a lot of lanterns, lamps. Equipment that is used for building sets on stage. And this is an amazing area as well. People that have been on the stage have heard strange noises coming from down below. And that's the reason that we've come down here. Now, here, I need to duck to go under this. Maybe I should take my hat off. But in this area, this is where, for a long time, a piano used to be housed. And that piano, it would be taken up on the stage if it was going to be used in a show. It would have to be tuned first, of course, because it would be down here in storage. But people who are on the stage, They've heard a piano being played. Now, it's coming from beneath their feet. It is coming from beneath the stage. But when they've come down, the piano has been covered and nobody else has been here. Now, I'm just checking to see what else is down here at the moment. As you can see, it's mostly the chairs. There's no piano at the moment. I can't see one. There used to be. There must be taken out. Unfortunately, during these difficult times, many of the theatres are closed, so it's a time for a lot of equipment to be checked, changed, and so it may have gone off uh, to be tuned or just to be checked, or maybe it's been lent to someone else as well. Now, we're going to go back up onto the stage. Here we go. Up the steps. Thankfully, a light comes on. I like these safety measures these days. Now, just have a look. There's many controls in here. As you can see, buttons, switches, they're everywhere. Hopefully you can see me. What I might do is put the lights on here so that you can see a bit more of what is on the stage. I want you to be able to see things, not just me in the dark. But this is a wonderful stage of the Lowther Pavilion. And I have to say, an extremely clean 
tiny stitch. Now I'm going to set the camera down. It's going to sit over here. And I'm going to see if anything happens. Now, as I was saying, it's very dark in the auditorium. Uh, I've put the lights on on the stage, but I do want to take you, as I've said, to the control room. Uh, and that's where uh, we're going to head to now. So let's go to the control room. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Um, the reason I said hold on, you might have seen things have brightened up a little bit. Some of the auditorium lights have come on. Not all of them just one strip um, I don't know where the light switch is I know where the working lights are backstage I have no idea and there's nobody in the control room um, let's go up there now um, well, I wasn't expecting that I know things do happen here and I've seen things that happen, and I've heard the staff talking about things that have happened, and of course people coming to see shows. But why would the lights come on? That's just bizarre. I'm going to go up to the control room and make sure <laughs> there's nobody there. Um, there we go. Control. Now it is dark up here, um, so you're going to have to go. Oh, good. Motion sensor lights saves the day. Uh, I'm sure there's motion sensors up here, but now it's a little bit crowded up here. Um, but I've got a great view into the auditorium. I am going to turn the camera around so you can see, especially now that the lights are on. So let me just turn the camera around and you can see right down into the auditorium. Right all the way to the back of the stage. It is from up here that people have heard things and seen things. People that have worked up here have seen lights right the way across the front of the stage. They've seen shadows, figures. They believe that it could be somebody walking right across the front of the seating line, going from over to my right as I'm looking down, right in front to where the wall is. So I'm just wondering what it is that they're seeing. Just bring the camera back to myself. Now, after we've done this area, I'm going to take you back down to the dressing rooms. But let me just get my lantern. I'm still trying to figure out who turned the lights on. There's nobody here. Can you hear that? Can you? Can you know that trigger object, the doll? It's just come off. Hold on, right, right, we're going back down to the, oh god, now, I'm trying not to drop things, right, down the stairs, that storeroom, the one that I've put the trigger object in, don't know if you heard her, but she definitely went off, she definitely shouted out to us, so, there was me wanting to take you into dressing rooms. She's on the floor. Hold on, let's switch in here. Can you see? 
switches on the floor. It must be a light switch. Maybe not. There's nothing in here. I am shocked. I know things do happen in here. We've had trigger objects move. We've had voices. We've had knocks on the door. Um, but look, she wasn't there. Um, let me just bring my lantern back up again so you can see. She's okay, she's in one piece. But hopefully you heard her the way I heard her in the control room. Um, I'm, I'm going to bring her with me. I don't know. No. Um, I've got to do it, haven't I? There's no sense in telling you stories and... and not actually trying to capture anything, so I'm just going to shout. I'm just going to ask if there's anybody from the spirit realm with us in this storeroom, give us a sign. Now I'm holding the camera in one hand, I'm holding a lantern in another. Um, please give us a sign. I know she's sitting on metal. They are well, it sounds similar to that. If there's anyone with us in this room from the spirit realm, give us a sign. Make another noise. Still surprised it. I heard her. Uh, I'm hoping it was picked up on camera. Um, that'll be the first thing I check. It's not just a doesn't seem right. Does not feel right to me. Um, let's take my little friend. And let's go backstage. I want to go to the dressing rooms. Um, I'm not sure which one we're going to, whether it's dressing room three or four. But let's see. I'm just going to leave my little friend on the stage for now. She's been unceremoniously dumped on the stage. Sorry about that. Um, but let's let's go backstage. So I'm going to go to the dressing rooms, and then I'm going to go back onto the stage itself. Now, let's go. Which dress, which dressing room am I going to go? Three or four? Um, well, that's the toilets. Even I get confused in here. We're going to go to dressing room four, the smaller one, the one that I already explained, that people who have been in here have seen the door opening. Now, let me put the camera down. Hopefully it's still going and I haven't stopped anything. Otherwise, um, you won't be best pleased with me. I'm just going to turn the light out. Ian, I'm just going to ask if there is anyone from the spirit realm in this dressing room. Give me a sign. I know you've all heard this before. Um, sometimes it is the best way to try and communicate. Yes, I know I could bring Ouija boards and I can bring the pendulums and lots of meters, but that's not for the Victorians, did it? still thinking about that tall in, in the storeroom. I know there will be some people who are watching this who have been here on my ghost hunts and I know 
and you will be thinking about that storeroom and some of the things that have happened to you. So please let people know it's not just me that experiences things like that. It's not a cold theater, it's, it's quite warm. It's cold outside, but inside it's warm. There is, now there is a window here, it's got a shutter on it. The window is shut, the window is locked. No breeze, no draft. Definitely cold in here. I'd like to go back onto the stage. Um, it's just getting colder. Very cold. Let's go on the stage. If we've time, we can come back here again later. But I know that. Um, Dan will be coming back soon and I don't want him to walk in whenever we are carrying out any experiments. I'm just going to turn off the light and dressing room quickly. And let's go back up onto the stage. Now, the lights are still on, the stage anyway. I'm not sure why they would be on in the auditorium. That has freaked me out, I'm afraid. are still on. So the lights on the stage are on. That's what I wanted. The lights in the auditorium. Still only just one side. I'll ask Dan about that when I see him a little bit later. But I didn't expect that to happen. Right, I'm just going to put everything down again. Just get this in the right place. That should be. Can you just see it? So hopefully that's all in place. Right. I'm just going to sit here and relax because my head is pounding. I don't know whether it's because of dressing room four. People have complained about having headaches in and out of that dressing room. And it could be the storeroom. Um, you heard that. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. You, it wasn't just me. That's come from underneath the stage. Right. Let's, let's go back underneath the stage. Come on. Flipping heck. Uh, oh. Right. Uh, right. Now, the lights are still on under the stage. Yeah. You go first. Going to the, the front under the stage. Oh, scared myself there. That's the door sliding into place. Um, I don't get it. Definitely there was a banging on the floor. It must have come from underneath here. It's got to have. There's, 
no other reason. I'm going to go back up on the stage. There's definitely nothing here. This is the storage tables. As you can see, tables upside down. Pile them on top of one another. Storage tables. If there was a show on, this would be crowded, but obviously there's no shows at the moment. Anywhere down here. So we're going back up onto the stage. Just come around this way. Nothing here. So I'm not sure what's going on, um, but I'm going to go back onto the stage. So let's go up the staircase. Those lights have stayed on quite some time this time. <laughs> I'm peering around corners now. Got me nervous. see into the auditorium again. I'm out of breath. I didn't run. But I wasn't expecting violence. If I'd heard anything, I'll be honest, I was hoping it was going to be a piano. But there's no piano down there. And because that's what's been heard more often than not. I think it's time to go back to the front of the theatre now. Uh, I think Dan will be coming back shortly. And then um, he'll want to lock up. I will want to go into uh, Lowther Gardens now that it has gone dark outside. So, for now, from Lowther Pavilion, thank you for joining me. Thank you for watching. And perhaps. You'll come and join me in the next event. And the ghost tour here at Lowther Pavilion. Dan and I will be arranging some more. Um, it's an amazing place. You've got to come back. Not just virtually and online, but in person. For now, thank you for watching the Victorian Fifth Century Investigation. And we'll meet in a little bit of a clouded. Um, minutes and that will make me in the gardens of Lowther. It's time to pause this video and I'll see you soon. Well I'm back again. Um, <laughs> I went to the door. Uh, no Dan. So it's time to say goodbye to the Lowther. Wonderful auditorium. Control room. Storerooms on the other side stage. But Dan should be here any second. And we'll just go for a little wander into the gardens. Just open these curtains. I'd rather do that now so that if he does arrive, um, I don't scare myself silly. So. I hope you've enjoyed my little walk through of Lowther Pavilion. Um, a couple of strange things happened, obviously. Damn, <laughs> it's all right. Um, here we go. Just in time. I'm just glad you are here. <laughs> um, I need to point out just a couple of things. I know you left us in the dark. Oh, did you find the light? Well, I, I know where the light switches for the working lights on the stage. Yeah, yeah. So I turned those on because it was a bit too dark. But I didn't turn those on. I don't know where. I went up the control 
box, a control area. There's nothing up there. Um, but it's only one side. So I don't right. know. Right, well, I was on the stage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, seriously, I was, I was on the stage when I stood up to go to the control room okay. and these lights came on. And I did go straight that way. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm afraid. <laughs> see, I'm the one that can leave. <laughs> I've got to lock this plumbing place up. There you go. <laughs> now, we are going out into the gardens. Yes. Um, so, Dan, once again, thank you very much for letting us in. You're welcome. And thank you very much, even more so, for letting us out. Thank you. And we shall have a chat yes. because we are coming back to do ghost tours. Now the pavilion, but don't tell anyone yet. Right. Uh, <laughs> I don't know whether I'm looking forward to going into the gardens now. Yeah, I didn't think it was going to be that bad in here either. Now I shall sneak past. Dan, thank you so much. Um, I'd like to say enjoy yourself, but um, yeah, have fun. Bye. Um, hello. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm not the only one that's here at Lowder Gardens. How did you know? So, we're just going to go for a little wander back to where we started now. Um, it is a little bit dark. Excuse me. There are some people here, obviously. Uh, you heard the dog. Beautiful dog. Obviously didn't like me, decided to bark. So. The wonderful Lowther Pavilion. Um, eerie. Spooky. Definitely haunted. Now, I'm coming up along the pathway. Uh, back to the shrimper, not the pond with the statue, thank you Dan, but the shrimper. Because it's around this area that people have seen two ghosts, two apparitions. Once we go on the other side of the shrimper, uh, I will say exactly what people have seen. And who knows, at the moment it's gone quiet in this area. Um, I think the dog walkers are closer to the theater. So we should be fine. We shouldn't have any interruptions, I hope. <laughs> Famous last words. But let me explain. What many people have seen is a lady sitting on one of the benches. You can see just behind me, there are some benches on that pathway. They've seen a lady sat on the benches. Now, this lady is just minding her own business. She's just sat there, not doing anything. But many people see her and she just stands up from the bench. See the bench behind her. When she stands up, she walks back towards the shrimper. She goes round to the left. I'm hoping you can see something in front of me. It is going dark again. No lamp just at the moment. You may be able to see one in the distance. We're going down to one of the benches here because it's along this path now that she's seen again sitting on the bench right here. Just where I have put my lantern. But 
that's not the only apparition that's seen sitting on this bench because not long after she sits on the bench, that's when people see a gentleman. A gentleman who, again, comes from where the shrimper is. He walks up the pathway and he too sits on the bench next to the lady. They look at each other. They hold hands. And that's when they disappear. People have seen this couple vanish in front of their eyes on the bench. Lather Gardens and Lather Pavilion are haunted. Perhaps you might want to have a little wander around. Make sure you have people with you. It is quite dark at the moment. I hope you've enjoyed this edition of the Victorian Ghost Hunter Investigates. Time for me to get ready to go and do some filming in another location. So it's time to say goodbye from Lowther Gardens and Lowther Pavilion. I hope you've enjoyed our little walk through of the areas. I hope you've enjoyed my little mini tour and investigation inside the theatre. And perhaps I will see you on one of our ghost tours here when you'll get to investigate those areas that you've seen this evening from the dressing room to the stage, under the stage, the control room, and even the store cupboard. For now, thank you, Dan, for looking after us. Looking after us, you locked me in. Thank you for locking me in, but thank you, more importantly, for unlocking the door and letting me out again. It's time to say goodbye from Lowther Pavilion and Gardens in Lytham. And I look forward to seeing you on another edition of the Victorian Ghost Hunter Investigates. Until then, be safe.